you probably don't know much about the metal antimony. To start, it has many exciting aliotropes. But what is an aliotrope? An aliotrope is a different structure form of the same element, exhibiting distinct properties due to this variation in arrangement of atoms. By tweaking the arrangement of atoms in the structure, we can get wild properties. And antimony has probably the best aliotrope out there. This aliotrope, known as explosive antimony, does what it says on the tin, and explodes if you touch it. But to explore this property, we first need to make some antimony metal, and that's the goal of this video. Then next week, we'll take that antimony metal and form the explosive aliotrope out of it. Let's get you familiar with metal. Antimony is a listerious gray metalloid, symbolized by SB on the periodic table. It's not your everyday metal, it's brittle with a large crystalline structure, and boasts a bluish-white metallic luster that sets it apart. Antimony is one of the few elements that expands when it's solidified. This is a rare property that adds another layer to its uniqueness. But what makes antimony truly fascinating lies in its historical significance. Antimony's tale reaches far back into antiquity. Ancient civilizations such as Egyptians and Greeks incorporated it into their lives, using antimony compounds for cosmetics and medical purposes. Antimony sulfide was used as an eye cosmetic in ancient Egypt up to as early as 3100 BC. Antimony can be found as a simple ore known as stimite, antimony trisulfide. We can liberate the metal in two main ways. The classic roasting of stimite to form antimony trioxide, then a reduction with carbon, or a one-step reduction where antimony sulfide is directly reduced with iron to form the metal. For this video, I will cover direct reduction. To begin, 110 grams of antimony sulfide is mixed with 47 grams of iron and 30 grams of borax. Borax acts as a flux here in the reaction. The charge is then loaded into a graphite crucible. The reaction is carried out at 1000 degrees Celsius. The borax absorbs the iron sulfide formed by the reaction, and heavy antimony metal falls to the bottom. Be careful not to heat the reaction above 1380 degrees Celsius. The antimony will boil. The reaction is stirred during the run to allow even mixing and adequately complete the reaction. For these kinds of reaction, there is no clear sign that the reaction is done. After you feel adequate time has elapsed, the reaction is considered done. In my case, I allowed it to run for an hour to ensure the reaction was complete. Once the reaction is complete, the crucible is taken out and allowed to cool. Now here's the challenge, collection of the metal. I didn't pour it out directly to avoid forming oxides and to not mix it with the flux. I took the crucible and made cuts to add weak points. Then I performed percussive maintenance on the crucible till the slug was liberated. This reveals to us our excellently shiny metal, but this is much smaller than I expected, so some flux must have trapped the metal. I need a way to remove all the flux and collect the metal. To do this, I will use hydrochloric acid to take care of the job. And the nice thing about this is that the metal does not react with the acid, just the flux. Digestion of the slug took a while, but by heating, I accelerated the dissolving process. The green color is due to iron being dissolved. Once all the acid is used up, I decanted and rinsed our product.
At this point, I noticed there was still some flux left, so I added more acid and allowed the reaction to go for a longer time. Soon after, no flux was left, and we could see our nice shiny metal at the bottom. I again poured off the acid and rinsed with water. Then I removed all the water by allowing to rinse with acetone. This was then evaporated off, and we are left with a bunch of bone-dry antimony metal. This is fine, but I want a nice slug of antimony. I loaded all the antimony powder into a crucible and topped it off with some borax to protect it from the air. The charged crucible was then placed in the furnace, and the temperatures were ramped up to 1000 degrees. Antimony melts at around 600, so the 1000 degrees will ensure that any impurities would melt out and get trapped by the borax. I then turned off the furnace and allowed it to cool to room temperature. At this point, I removed the crucible, and we could see our metal is nice and melted. The next step is to crack open the crucible to free our slug of antimony metal. The yield was 52.32 grams, or 66.2% of the expected 78.85 grams. The low yield was most likely caused by insufficient mixing during the reaction, or loss during cleanup. If I were to do this reaction over again, I would use an excess of iron to ensure a complete reaction. The reason why I did not initially do this was I did not plan on doing the acid dissolving step, but the acid dissolving step will take care of any leftover iron. Now I can make explosive antimony allotropes. Thanks for watching. Stay scientific.